in the part 1 part 2 and part 3 we learned about dry heat sterilization moist heat sterilization and filtration method of sterilizations now in this part we are going to discuss about radiation one of the type of our physical methods of sterilization now let's have a quick uh, review of the physical methods of sterilization so this is the definition of sterilization as we know it's a complete elimination or killing of a microorganism including the spores and making the material free from them is going to be called as sterilization and we know there are two types of sterilization one is the physical method of sterilization and then second one is the chemical method of sterilization and the physical method of sterilization is again being classified into different types like sunlight, drying, heat, filtration and radiation. And these all types we have gone in the previous parts. And now in this part we are going to discuss about radiation. Okay. And these are all the chemicals that were involved in the chemical method of sterilization which will be discussed in detail in the next part. Okay. So here uh, is uh, examples of your radiation types. One is ultraviolet rays and the gamma rays or the x-rays and then coming to the physical methods of sterilization the overall so here the heat radiation and filtration the heat is going to be of dry heat and moist heat and its types and then we have gone through the filtration also different types of the filters so air filter example is the HEPA filters that we discussed in detail and now we are going to discuss about the radiation so radiation we are having the two types that is non-ionizing ionizing non-ionizing comes as infrared rays and ultraviolet and ionizing comes as x-rays and the gamma rays so let's uh, see this radiation yes coming to the radiation radiation method of sterilization is also referred to as cold sterilization so especially ionizing radiations are going to be considered as cold sterilization okay and radiation is going to be an effective uh, way to sterilize or to reduce the microbial burden in almost any substance through the use of electromagnetic radiation so that's a uh, this uh, radiation is mainly used in the food industries okay and then the sunlight we know the sunlight is a natural source of having the radiation on earth and it includes visible light ultraviolet light uh, then you are going to have the infrared and radio waves out of which the uv is going to the most effective in the sunlight then coming to the types of radiation so the radiations are majorly of two types one is going to be of ionizing and the one is the non-ionizing so ionizing radiation comes as x-rays and gamma rays and the non-ionizing comes as uv rays and infrared rays so let's uh, have a look of these two in detail now so this is how the radiation is going to be of two types non-ionizing ionizing non-ionizing non obviously uv and infrared rays and then ionizing x-rays gamma rays and cosmic rays so coming to the first one ionizing radiation so what are the examples of ionizing radiation obviously x-rays gamma rays and cosmic rays isn't it and these x-rays gamma rays cosmic rays are highly lethal that means they cause a very dangerous mutations in the organisms or the cells and obviously they will lead to the death of the organism that's what we are doing in the sterilization we are removing or killing the microorganisms isn't it? so here the x-rays are, are going to be of a very highly lethal okay because of having a wavelength of 0 0.124 nanometers and the gamma rays have even shorter wavelengths and these are going to have a high penetrating power so because of having the high penetration power obviously uh, these are going to be of very effective okay so uh, they have high penetrating power as i told you and ir that is this ionizing radiation can uh, dislodge the electrons from atoms into certain ions so whatever the atoms that are present in our cell these ionizing radiations are uh, what they are doing is they are dislodging the electrons they are removing the electrons so obviously once the electrons are removed from any atom it is going to be converted into ions which is a disforming nature so then what is the mechanism that is going to occur in this uh, ionizing radiation the lethal action of ionizing radiation is due to uh, mainly its action on the DNA and other vital cell constituents like uh, whatever it may be uh, DNA, RNA, all these things, okay. So what is happening there means they are breaking the bonds, okay. 
hydrogen bonds are going to be broke down and they are getting denatured and the atoms becoming the ions. So these are all the effects of this ionizing radiation. Then why we are using this in the form of sterilization? Yes, we have to kill the microorganisms. So obviously, uh, this method of sterilization, as I told you, is mainly used in the food industry along with the, uh, that one. We are also going to be used to sterilize the disposable materials made up of plastic, wood, fabrics, uh, then cotton, okay, where we cannot sterilize these all things with either the filtration or with the heat. Okay, like syringe, swabs, papers, foils, types of rubbers, etc. And in the food processing also we are going to use this uh, ionizing radiation. So that's how this ionizing radiation is involved in the process of our sterilization. Then what is the next one is our non-ionizing radiation. The examples of non-ionizing radiation are ultraviolet rays or UV light, simply called as UV light, and other example of this uh, one is infrared rays. Okay, so if you take the uh, wavelength of this one, so this is a spectrum. So where is our UV? Here is our UV, and here is our infrared rays. So before, below that, you are having the shorter wavelength, but you are having the higher penetration in the ionizing radiation. Okay, so these are all comes under the ionizing and UV and the infrareds are going to come as the non-ionizing. So why we are calling them as ionizing? Because these rays are having the capacity of causing the ions. So I told you the atoms are going to create the ions, the dislodgement of electrons from atoms creating the ions. So that's the reason why these are named as ionizing radiations. Whereas non-ionizing means these are not doing any formation of ions from the atoms. Okay, now what these UV light or uh, ultraviolet rays are doing uh, in the killing of microorganisms, how it is doing. So let's see. So UV is absorbed by purine and permarine bases of nucleic acids. That is nothing but our DNA. Okay, now this mechanism, what it is doing. So this is our DNA. Assume this is our DNA double helix structure. And here are some dimers. Uh, formation, thymine, thymine, dimers formation. Generally, they have to link like this. Complementary base pairing should be done with the hydrogen bonding. But what see here, there is some sort of uh, this formation that is because of the thymine, thymines are going to bind. And that too with the adjacent one. Okay. And this type of denaturation occurring because of the UV light exposure. That means when a nucleic acid that is DNA is exposed to this UV light, they are going to have a kind of mutation called as thymine thymine dimer formation. And this thymine thymine dimer, okay, it is formed. What happens? This thymine thymine dimer formation interfere with the replication process and function of the DNA. So it is uh, interfering with the replication as well as in the functioning of the DNA. So that's how it is not allowing the bacteria to replicate and it is going to stop its function and it is making the bacteria to die. So that's how this mechanism is going to be used in the process of sterilization. Then what are the advantages of this UV uh, rays? So UV rays uh, kill all kinds of microorganisms due to the shorter wavelength and high energy. And these are produced artificially by mercury vapor lamps called a germicidal or sterilizing lamps. So this is our laminar airflow cabinet there I told you in the filtration. So you are going to have a UV light. Have you seen here? So this is a UV light. So these lamps are used in hospitals, school rooms, industries, and even in the operation theaters to sterilize the whole room to reduce the microorganism population. Then what are the disadvantages? So obviously everything is going to have some disadvantages. Here also we have. So what are those? So it does not penetrate through the glass. So that's the reason why we are using it in the laminar cabinet. Okay. So once you switch on the UV light, you should close all the doors and then you have to switch on. Uh, cloth, paper and other materials. At the same time exposure to UV light can cause uh, damage to the eyes and uh, some years of exposure to this UV light can cause uh, skin cancers. Okay, So these are the main disadvantages. So if you check the preventive measures it's not that much uh, effect as uh, x-rays. So that's uh, how we have finished both the radiation methods. One is going to be the non-ionizing and the one is the ionizing. And little bit I want to add a more information. 
nowadays that we are using in some sort of uh, uh, thing so that is ultrasonic and sonic vibrations or acoustic radiations okay so that means the sound waves or sonic vibrations are being used in the sterilization process so what are that and that we will see here so that is going to be called as acoustic radiation okay the sonic vibrations or ultrasonic vibrations are being used so sound waves beyond the audible range are being called as ultrasonic waves that's we know and microorganisms are not susceptible to normal sound but some microorganisms are sensitive to ultrasonic waves of about 20 kilo cycles per second okay now what they are doing so they are disrupting the cells by sound waves is called as sonification so when these sonic vibrations or acoustic radiation are going to fall on those cultures they are going to disrupt the cells by sound waves is called as sonification okay which is also called as acoustic radiation and uh, coming to this microorganism, different microorganisms are going to have different sensitivity to these radiations. So that's all uh, the thing that we have to remember about the sound waves. Then what is the mechanism behind this? How it is? How these sound waves are able to kill these uh, uh, microorganisms? So let's see. When sound wave of uh, high frequency passes through a liquid, so containing these microorganisms, it causes gas bubble. Uh, gas bubble cavities in the liquid so that means uh, you will get some sort of uh, if you are blowing uh, taking a straw and blowing some sound or uh, air you are going to get the bubbles in the same manner when these so sound waves are going to be passed through a liquid you are going to have the gas bubble cavities in the liquid and these cavities grow in size till they collapse suddenly so suddenly all the things are going to uh, collapse so a high velocity pressure is going to be made in the liquid and these extreme fluctuations of pressure break the cell wall structures and intracellular constraints are liberated so inside what happens the cell is going to uh, unbear this pressure and the cell is going to be burst out and obviously the internal components are going to be liberated and that's how the death of the organism is going to occur a number of physical and chemical changes occurs in the liquid medium such as destruction of enzymes depolymerization or macromolecules okay this is all the mechanism that is happening in this uh, uh, sonic vibration sterilization method then application where to use this one so these sonic or ultrasonic waves are not being used in practical means of sterilization uh, but uh, they are being useful in fragmentation of cells to study about uh, ribosomes membranes enzymes and other components so practically in means of sterilization we are not using but for study of these uh, internal components if you want to lyse a cell so obviously you can apply this sonic vibration method or acoustic radiation or ultrasonic uh, method okay so this is all uh, about our physical methods of sterilization so we have finished the all the types of physical methods of sterilization that is uh, your heat sterilization then radiation method of sterilization then filtration method of sterilization then in the coming part we are going to discuss about the chemical sterilization which is also called as disinfection. Thank you.